redesign this training in a flipped learning, microlearning, and gamification strategy following a class pacing with some self-paced activities. There will be 10 weekly knowledge checks, which are a set of objective questions with a maximum of 20 questions each. The online quiz will typically be available for a week. Likewise, there will be four performance tasks which are short activities related to the module. Moreover, the final knowledge test is a comprehensive test covering the topics from the first day to the last day of discussion. There are 40 objective type items. A certificate of attendance per module will be issued for those who comply with the requirements of each module. A digital badge will be given for every completed module. A certificate of participation with 15 CPD points will be given to those who first got below 80% score but higher than zero, second, submitted all the performance tasks, and third, attended at least 50% of the online synchronous or Zoom session. Last but not the least, a certificate of completion with 15 CPD points will be issued if the following requirements are met. First, those achieving 80% or more of the total points possible for all four modules. Second, submitted all the performance tasks. And third, attended at least 50% of the online synchronous or Zoom sessions. I will be the lead facilitator together with me, our experts and trained teachers at the Office of Cinnamon Online University Learning. Together also are the faculty from the College of Computer Studies and our Technology Business Incubation Office from Cinnamon University. This training is funded by the Private Education Assistance Committee or PAYA of Aspire Project Grant through the Association of Christian Schools, Colleges and Universities. Heavenly Father, we come to you in this hour, asking for your guidance and protection to our virtual gathering today. We thank you for the gift of life, the gift of family, the gift of work, and the gift of friendship. We thank you for this great opportunity to bring us together in this session as brothers and sisters. Bless the committee, the facilitator, and the attendees of this gathering. May we continue to value and appreciate the true essence and meaning of life with the help of your grace. And as we go along to our discussion today, we humbly pray that you would deepen our understanding. Lord, enlighten us and give us wisdom every day. Forgive us for our shortcomings and remind us to always be mindful of the things we do in life. We offer our life and our decisions to you, O Lord. May this gathering today create a memorable experience and a fruitful outcome. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, our Redeemer and our Savior. Amen. Good afternoon, everyone. I am Orielita Maipa, and I will be your moderator for this afternoon. 
So allow me to welcome uh, each and every one of you. And uh, thank you for taking your time to join us despite your visit schedule. So this is a module four knowledge deepening session. And without any further ado, let's all welcome Dr. Dave Marshall. Good afternoon, everyone. It's nice to see you all once again. Uh, I think the last time that uh, we met is during the, I think, second knowledge depending. I missed the third knowledge depending session due to equally important uh, uh, engagement. So this is, uh, as mentioned by uh, uh, our moderator this uh, afternoon, this is our fourth um, knowledge depending. And fourth, it's all about uh, educational technology planning and recalibrating our syllabus and uh, we have posted and the uh, activities and at the same time performance or knowledge check at the same time activities for you to perform basically knowledge or the module four is all about moving forward as we all know during the first uh, knowledge deepening uh, one of our activities there is um, trying to reflect if are we going back or moving forward? And this module four is actually a takeoff, a takeoff for the next semester perhaps or the next um, implementation or the next school year of the implementation. And I hope every one of us here were able to download and read the Commission on Higher Education, especially for the CHED on the CMO on on-site on -site learning because that's what I believe um, a preparation to take off for um, um, future proofing education, especially in the tw 21st century. Uh, one of our activities also is uh, asking you what would be the key priorities in the new normal, in the new normal of classroom. Results shows that um, very interesting because the priorities among the many uh, items on the checklist. Of course, we have internet connectivity and bandwidth. That's uh, number one priority. It is very interesting that uh, many of you uh, check on teachers' attitude toward edtech. At the same time, accessibility and student support for inclusivity. And I totally understand and agree with you that especially the inclusive education in teaching in online or educational technology is not being prioritized because what was prioritized for many of us is the acquisition of skill for us to continue teaching and learning. There is also a priority on recruitment, training, and development. Um, another question in the activity that uh, very interesting also is on which educational technology challenges do you see a problem in future proofing education and number one on the rank are two inequities for special needs which is also in conjunction that support the first question for special needs students and the insufficient at home instructional support that is where or this information gives us an idea what would be the priorities in the next upskilling or in the next um, online training that we could offer through several partnerships in teaching and learning. So I hope um, you have tried or you have reviewed already our final performance task. Um, this is only an exercise as, as part of educational planning, um, just imagine yourself being a member of a educational committee in your school and you are asked to propose for an improvement of the educational technology uh, integration policy and guidelines in your school. What's going to be the vision? What's going to be the mission? Just, just reflect. And what are some of the educational technology policies that you would want your institution to be highlighted or to be prioritized. And uh, part also of the exercise in the final activity is to, for you to be able to submit a full-blown uh, recalibrated syllabus that is to support, to see and visualize how you are going to incorporate your policy in the classroom. Because sometimes the preparation of the vision and the mission is to... Um, what is this? It's, 
it's 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 too big or it's difficult the, the the challenge is how how can we articulate the vision and mission into the teaching and learning particularly in the classroom and among the initiative uh, to articulate the vision and mission and the policy is to really see your syllabus if your syllabus Uh, has integrated educational technology and incorporated also the policies that stipulated in your university. So I think um, that's uh, that the message that I wanted to convey for this uh, knowledge deepening. And just let us know if you have some some reflections also when it comes to future proofing, when it comes to um visioning and putting some policies into the mission or educational technology mission commission on higher education released already on the cmo on on-site learning for the basic education we know that uh, you are all um required to go back on campus in person because um many wanted to go back basically on the practices in teaching and learning before COVID time. But our appeal to you is continue continue to maximize the skills that you have gotten, especially during the training, during the past two years, or the, the, the acquired skills that you have developed and continue putting that and give back to the students. Okay, so that's the message. As I mentioned, the message that uh, I wanted to convey, educational planning is not that easy. It's not overnight. And it needs a cohesive stakeholder and ecosystem of stakeholders for you to be able to implement holistically and comprehensively when it comes to educational technology. Your syllabus, as I mentioned, just to highlight, your syllabus is a manifestation on how educational technology integration is implemented into your institution. So we are excited to see your recalibrated syllabus, especially, especially that uh, we are in the new normal, the now normal in teaching and learning or Others uh, call it the better norm normal because we will we we would want to continue but still incorporate educational technology. Uh, in the rest of the uh, minutes, we will not go into a breakout. We wanted to have a sharing, most probably, especially on the educational technology planning, visioning, and even your recalibrated syllabus. We did not also, we opted not to prepare our, our guide questions or uh, 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 re reflection because we wanted to have it open and we want to hear from you anything that you would like to share uh, in response to or in relation to module four. Anyone who would like to share? Anyone who would like to share or perhaps you have questions about, about recalibration, about on-site learning, about visioning educational technology, or the topic of Mom Alfie Arcelo about recalibration, what's going to be the model now, considering that we have to go back in person on campus. Anyone? Hi, good afternoon to Mom Lira to Ma'am Catherine, and to Ma'am Arlene. Yes, good afternoon. Anyone who would like to, you have, or do you have some questions or clarification as far as module four is concerned? Anyone? Or clear lang? Actually, sir, I haven't finished seeing, seeing the videos. Okay. Anyway, you still have so much time. Um, because you are given until, or later on, uh, Sir Fredley will be announcing our schedule of activities. Because if you notice module four, there are only two topics. The first topic is my topic, um, educational technology planning. And on lesson two, which is on the recalibration. You have, I, I just have to emphasize that the recalibration, there is no so much 
what is this new things in the process because we've been through a lot of recalibration i think how many times we recalibrated from face to face from face to face to full odl from full odl to limited instruction and then from the limited instruction to on-site learning so at least basically for the span of two years we have experienced three recalibration process of our syllabus. And I hope that uh, we are familiar already when it comes to the process of recalibration. Question regarding the recalibrated syllabus. Any guidelines about it? The previous, previous one specifically asked for two units. We did not specify any specific template, any format, because we always believe that any institution, we have our own format. We have our own template. It's an open uh, processor. Uh, it depends on your uh, what is processed in your school. Um, the 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 syllabus, the recalibrated syllabus, as part of the requirement in the final performance task, is the full blown syllabus. And like with the lesson two of Mom Alfie, it's just basically a unit or two. Uh, just to emphasize the recalibration process. Here is on the final performance task, we wanted to see how you incorporate uh, those learnings from lesson one, lesson uh, module one, module two, module three, and module four. By the way, here, Seliman, we use blended. Uh, yeah. um, yes, uh, at Seliman, we will be into the so-called technology-enhanced on-site learning. So we define at Siliman our policy. We define how we define on-site learning. We have some specifics and so on and so forth. Yes, that is correct, Ma'am Lira, because uh, um, that is really true. That is why we wanted to assist perhaps and uh, uh, so that you will have a self-exercise uh, on how you are going to recalibrate your syllabus, considering that, especially if you are if you are coming from the commission, higher education, uh, that uh, all of us are mandated to go back in person. On the challenge is how you are going to integrate educational technology as we go back to the in person. In the learning plan, usually it's a semester. If you are in the higher education, it's uh, five months. If you are coming from the basic education, it's the entire learning plan of the learning plan of the semester. Okay. Thank you to that, Ma'am Arlene. Thank you, Sir Dino, for sharing. Okay. Alfie, do you have something to add from your lesson? Hello, everyone. Um, just to also answer, Sir Dino, uh, about... Uh, the specifications or requirements. So that's why, uh, as mentioned by Sir Dave, we didn't give a template because uh, it would actually depend on uh, your school or your institution's um, template, but it would be better to highlight the technology-enhanced uh, flexible learning column because in there, um, uh, your your framework, the framework that you will be using, either institutional or uh, by choice, the ones that we have mentioned, and maybe more if you have your own, uh, can be actually placed in that particular column. So that particular column could actually uh, change a lot of uh, um, things in your syllabus, especially now. Uh, for this activity, it's still for limited face-to-face, -face, but um, eventually when we will be having another, um, we will be having our on-site uh, learning or flexible learning for the next uh, semester, you could just, you could actually also recalibrate it for specific for, for on-site flexible learning. So um, again, just make sure to highlight that particular column or aspect of your learning plan and syllabus. Thank you, Alpi. So anyone, any additional sharing? perhaps reflection for uh, the topic educational technology. But uh, if you have not um, accessed yet all the learning materials, that's fine. Just uh, take your time. Totally understandable, especially that uh, this week is the, um, the final week, perhaps for many institutions. And uh, oh, by the way, Merry Christmas to everyone and advance Happy New Year. So I think we have no more 
questions here? None? Yes, Sir Dino, raising your hand. Or so, is, hello po, oh, good hi. afternoon. Hello, hello, good afternoon, sir. Uh, I believe this one po is um, the second run of the series of the of the modules. This, or is this one is this one the first one? No, this is the fourth module, sir. That means and the, um the the Ensetech uh learning materials, the entire stretch of the four modules. Was this one implemented before or this one is the, uh, no, oh, the first yeah. run? This is this is really the first run. Oh. This is the yeah. So you are the first batch. We oh. had last yes, we had last year actually, but the focus last year is more really on upskilling skills acquisition for online mm -hmm. delivery. So for for this module, for this Incitec, which focus really is on student engagement, this is the uh, first run. And you are kasi part po, of the uh, first batch. Because I was um, also thinking about the the probable use of the ano, the uh, portable uh, the learning management. Uh, however, if we look at the batch, uh, there were ano, we started with so many, and we're left with so few. Yes. And I think that it would really mirror uh, what will happen if it was used in, let's say, high school. Mm -hmm. uh, what, how do you see it having a higher, uh, what do you call this one, uh, accomplishment rate? Because like in basic education, we have to have everyone submit. It's not like, college that we could just fail every uh fail everyone that who doesn't submit something like that mm -mm. um i pardon me sir but i did not get your question but uh if you mean uh, uh if, if we have how can we ensure more participation is that what you mean or uh, more completion more completion uh in terms of success in um in finishing uh, a Bicronus uh, course like this. Mm -mm -mm. So we already have some alternate plans or, to this uh, as expected. This is actually, I could not count on how many times we deliver something like this. And it's all, it's all happening like that. There is, there is always a decline when it comes to when it comes to completion, in fact, in the universal data, it is always 12 to 18% success rate for any online, full online delivery like this. Um, we are, we have our some, um, what is this, reinforcement plan on how to, you know, uh, increase some of our um, success rates or completion when it comes to numbers. And uh we have actually on the pipeline activities that uh, we will do for the next or immediately after this activity once this uh, incitec will end by january i hope i responded to your inquiry sir dino yes but like uh, my concern was say if uh, if ever i plan to use it if i ever use it um, i will also be expecting very low completion rates or turning in rates for my students. Mm, uh, okay. How do we avert that? No. Mm, 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 mm. Sige, sir. Uh, we have some testimonies, we have some reflections, and we have some experiences from others. It's up, sir. Uh, it, it, it really depends on your implementation plan. So if you plan to use it in the classroom as part of the academic requirement, Yes, obviously, you are expected to get 100% uh, success rate because that is part of the academic requirement. I'll just give you an example. In my class, in my class, uh, one of the requirements is to create a portable learning management resources using PLMS. So obviously, the success rate is 100%. But if you, are, if you want to, to replicate like a, a, a training like this, we cannot really force teachers 
um, you know, just like this one, it's difficult to force teachers to please attend and, you know, um, compel them to submit. That is why we have some certain requirements when to release a certificate, certificate of attendance, completion. We already identified challenges, sir. So one of the challenges really is uh, teachers are fully loaded and then along the way, they could not submit because uh, there are other priorities that they have to attend to. In short, sir, it really depends on your implementation strategy. If you want to use it in a classroom, I believe it is 100% success rate. But if you want to offer like as part of your community extension and to offer it as a free training to other teachers, uh, one of the initiative that we did in other cohort of learners is the institution must sign in an agreement that they really have to finish and implement it. Dito kasi in this training with Bayak, uh, we don't do that. We don't do on MOA signing with the participants because uh, it's just part. The, the concept here, sir, is if you are familiar, MOOCs concept, anyone can just log in. And then according to your pace uh, and according to a topic of interest that you would want to continue or to complete. And uh, if you want to utilize PLMS, sir, please let us know. We can assist you. Uh, we can give you the learning materials. You can even use and download the materials that uh, we posted there. Let us know. Uh, we can set up and we can help you uh, if you need some assistance of, you know, um, training uh, other colleagues in your area. Okay. Sige, I, I thanks to Mom Trixie. That's just really true. Because uh, I personally use this in my class. And, you know, if that is part in your syllabus that teachers need to accomplish, I mean, students need to accomplish, obviously, the success rate is uh, 100%. But uh, training like this, um, again, it depends, on, it depends on the interest of the participants. Okay, so I guess uh, for the purposes of time, can we proceed to the next topic? I mean, the next segment of our... Uh, deepening, which is the announcement. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Dave. So uh, with the announcement, may I call on uh, Sir Fred Lee to give us the announcement for the day. Thank you. Hello, can you hear me? Okay, yes, so now let's proceed to the announcement. So here in the module four, as, as, as I said uh, from the previous uh, deepening, you will answer the, the lesson one and lesson two activities as well as knowledge checks. So please take note the due dates uh, for all those activities and then you have the knowledge check. And then for lesson two, same goes. Uh, you will look for the due date for the activity and then the knowledge uh, check. And then uh, we have the final uh, performance task and exam. So please take note the due date will be uh, December 31, 2022. And then the final exam is a comprehensive exam. Uh, the coverage for this one is from module one to module four. And then you are given only one attempt and then one hour to complete this particular exam. And then please take note. Uh, you will answer the module evaluation. So once you've done your uh, final performance task and final exam, you will answer the evaluation of the module four, and then you will get your certificate and badge for module four. And then for closing and culmination, so please take note to answer the following a course reflection, and then you have the survey and Lastly, is we have the course evaluation as a whole course of NC Tech. So please answer this one. And then, as you notice, we have a uh, lock icon. So this means that th this particular activity is restricted. Once you're done with that activity, then you can proceed to another activity that has been set. And then for the Announcement regarding the course uh, certificates with CPD points. This will be uh, announced uh, during our culmination program that will be happen 
on January 20, 2023. So I think uh, that's all. So if you have concerns or queries, so just email uh, edtech at su.edu.ph. So back to you, Ma'am Liz. Uh, sir, Bradley, I think there are concerns in our chat box. Maybe perhaps uh, let's address that first. Thank you. Okay. So here, so Mom Catherine, uh, Mom, uh, Mom Catherine, okay. So Mom Catherine, can, uh, this is regarding the certificate. So you will get your certificate. So we have the requirement in, in getting the uh, certificate of attendance. So basically, you will perform as as we see in the description on certificate and budge, you will perform the knowledge checks and then you have the activities or these are the activities from the lessons from that uh, module. And then you will answer the performance tasks and then you can, uh, and then you will uh, attend in the synchronous session. And that's uh, in that part, then you will, you can get your certificate of attendance. And some for in uh, some uh, uh, instances, you can also view the restriction for the attendance certificate of attendance. You just uh, click this particular icon, the lock icon, and then you will see uh, the conditions in getting your certificate of attendance. Okay, uh, I think that's it. Okay. Do so, you still have anything to add, Sir Freddy? Okay. Again. Uh, don't, don't hesitate, hesitate to, to email, email us in edtech at su.edu.ph. So thank you, everyone. Thank you again so much, Sir Fredley. And I hope we'll see each and everyone on you on our uh, culmination that will be on December 20. So before we end, um, may I request everyone to turn on their webcams for a photo opportunity. So we have two frames and we'll just um, plaster our smile all throughout. Okay, we'll have Mom um, Grace to take the photo. Okay, one for the first frame. Show your best smile. One, two, three. Smile. Okay, and for the next frame. One, two, three, smile. Okay, so thank you so much. That it for this afternoon. Again, I am Orielisa Maipa, and thank you for joining us. See you again soon. Take care and God bless.